So the paper looks at uh, state level trends in obesity. So there have been papers previously that have looked more at national trends, but we wanted to dig into what's happening in each state and also what's happening with different demographic groups within each state. National data is, is, is measured height and weight, so it's a lot more accurate. The CDC has been collecting state level estimates of height and weight for individuals for many years now. But the problem is that these estimates are collected over a telephone survey. And so when you call somebody and ask them, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? People tend to overestimate their height. Everybody wants to be a little bit taller. And people tend to underestimate their weight. These two sources of bias, lower height and, and higher weight, uh, underestimate BMI. And so this is what we call self-report bias. And each person is only underestimating their BMI, probably by a small, relatively small amount, but you end up misclassifying millions uh, of adults. And so you think that the obesity prevalence is, you know, five, eight percentage points lower in some states than it really is. So for this paper, the first thing we had to do was we developed a method to adjust the self-reported BMI distribution. And our new method adjusts the entire distribution, which is important really for capturing what's going on at the upper end, so people with really high BMIs. Um, other methods have really underestimated what's going on at the upper tail of the distribution. And so the main results of our paper are, are what do these trends look like by subgroup and where are we going? Where is obesity headed over the next 10 years? And we find that uh, in 2030, if trends continue, about one in two adults nationwide will have obesity. And states, there are about 29 states will have obesity prevalence higher than 50%. So more than half of adults will have obesity in most states. We also find that no state will have an obesity prevalence below 35%. And so 35% is sort of considered a high level for the past few years. So this means that we project that what will be the best states with the lowest obesity prevalence are going to be at the same level as some of the worst states now. So obesity is, is rising in every state in the U.S. Uh, and some states are going to be at a, at a very high level. What's even more concerning is the rise in severe obesity. So we find that nationally about one in four adults are projected to have severe obesity. So this is a, over a hundred pounds usually of, of excess weight. Um, this was surprising from this study because severe obesity has typically been uh, a rare condition, but we find that it's growing pretty rapidly in, in a lot of states. So about one in four adults nationwide and the prevalence will be higher than that, higher than 25% in 25 states. So some, some areas of the country are at higher risk. We also find that some demographic groups are at much higher risk for severe obesity. So we find nationally that um, severe obesity will become the most common BMI category. It used to be very rare, but we're pro projecting that it will become the most common BMI category nationally for women, for non-Hispanic black adults, and for uh, low-income adults, adults who make less than $50,000 per year. This is annual household income. And we find that uh, for very low-income adults, adults with less than $20,000, annual household income, severe obesity will be the most common BMI category in 44 states, so basically everywhere in the country. So we find that obesity is getting worse, more people are, are going to have it in every state, and the degree, the severity of obesity is also getting uh, a lot worse. So one of the main reasons we did this study was to help provide more information for state policymakers. So to give them a better sense of where things are headed in their state and which groups are, are more at risk. And there's a lot that state policymakers can do, actually. And so we, one of the most effective interventions and cost-effective interventions that we found is limiting intake of sugar-sweetened beverages. So some states are considering implementing um, sugar-sweetened beverage tax, which we find in other work would probably save more money than it costs to, to implement. Um, there's a lot of other preventative measures that state policymakers could could take. And so we, uh, in much of our work, we find that prevention really is going to be the key um, 
to, to managing, to better managing this epidemic. It's really hard to lose weight. It's really hard to, to treat obesity. And so prevention really has to be at the forefront of efforts to, to combat this, this growing epidemic.